Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video here on Armor of God. As always, thank you so much for being here with us, and hopefully you'll learn something useful for your own spiritual warfare with the videos we've put together for you. Anyway, for this video, I'd like to make a compilation of what exorcists said in the past, and I think it's something we can reflect on together. So now buckle up and let's get right on it. For the first on the list, I'll start with the late Father Gabriella Morph. I think you've seen this short clip before on YouTube, but I'm going to share this here again nonetheless. Number one, pedophiles are not possessed but tempted by the devil. During one particular interview, the late Father Gabriella Morph was asked whether he had ever performed exorcisms on priests accused of molesting children. Here's his response to the question. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Um, I'd like to begin uh, with something that you've said in your book, and that is that the, the, the devil is lodging in the Vatican. With all of the allegations we've seen recently of sexual abuse involving priests, do you believe that is the devil's work? Well, yes, the devil tempts everyone. He tempts everyone in every environment. In particular, he tempts those on top, in politics, in economics, in sport. And naturally, he tempts above all the religious leaders. So you shouldn't be surprised if the devil tempts those in the Vatican. That's his job. Have you ever performed an exorcism on a priest accused of... Uh, molesting a child. No, non mi è mai capitato. Ora i pedofili non sono indemoniati. No, it's never happened. Now, pedophiles are not possessed by the devil. They are tempted by the devil. They don't need exorcism. They need to be converted. To be converted to God. That's what they need. They need to confess. They need true penance, true repentance. That's what they need. They're not possessed. Number two. Father Joseph Iannuzzi on the Pope. Now this is rather interesting, and I decided to include this here because there are many Catholics at the moment who are so up in arms against Pope Francis, calling him heretic, and he's not really a Pope. Rodoglio is not a Pope. He is a fraud. He is a fraud and an imposter, and every damned cardinal that supports him, like Supich and McElroy and Tobin, is no more a bishop of the church than, in, than I say that the Dalai Lama. I said that once and somebody said, quit hitting on the Dalai Lama, he's a good guy. First, let us acknowledge that the Pacamama incident just should not have happened. It should not have happened. And I also acknowledge that there is room for grave concern concerning Archbishop Paglia and what happened at the Institute for Life, and I've spoken about that. But what you so often find with these right-wing groups is that they're able to take one or two, two truths and mix them in with an absolute pack of falsehoods. And sadly, again, that is what has happened on this occasion. So many falsehoods that I won't have time to cover them all in this video. But I have a basic rule. If I catch somebody out in telling a clear falsehood, then I'm slow to believe anything else that they say. And if I catch a person out in two clear falsehoods, then they're not worth listening to as far as I'm concerned. Nothing they say can be trusted. Absolutely nothing. You can almost presume that everything they say is False is false. Now, amongst the things that Father Altman said there, he gave two what were supposed to be quotations from Pope Francis. And I will deal with the, those two in detail because they were not quotations from Pope Francis, far from it. They were products of Father Altman's own head in his malice to attack uh, Pope Francis. And in light of that, I'd like to include here for that particular reason. What people who are not conversant in mystical theology fail to acknowledge is the simple distinction between the city of Rome, which goes beyond the Vatican, well beyond the Vatican, and the Catholic hierarchy, which is not limited. It goes well beyond Rome. Okay? So they seem, it's a simplistic mistake that they make. They say, oh, Rome, that must mean the Vatican. It doesn't mean the Vatican. Does it include the Vatican? Yes. 
But it doesn't mean it's just the Vatican. So when they say that the Antichrist will sit himself in Rome, they say, oh, that has to be the Vatican. Well, show me where the Blessed Mother said that. You won't find it anywhere. Nor will you find anywhere in any prophecy approved by the church that the Pope will become the Antichrist because he's not going to be the Antichrist. Jesus gave Peter, meaning all him and all his successors, the keys to the kingdom. On this rock of the papacy, he founded his church. So God will never allow the papacy to be perverted by a Pope who is an Antichrist. It will never happen. There have been over 40 anti-popes in the church, but guess what? Not one of them was a real Pope. They were all imposters usurping the Petrine powers illegitimately because they were never elected in a valid conclave. So these anti-popes really were never popes. They were people claiming to be the Pope and never were the Pope. Never has a validly elected Pope ever been um, associated with the Antichrist, never. It may be within the hierarchy, but that's not the Pope. Okay, the Pope will never be, God will never allow that to happen. Number three, Father Ripperger's controversial remark during the 2020 election. I think when I say the 2020 election, it's self-explanatory, isn't it? And this particular interview is controversial because, well, here's one example. x versus pastor says Democrats are possessed and in league with the devil in wild rant. And there's even a stage um, called the external phase in liberation, in the six stages of liberation, where the demons, once they start losing control over the interior battle, which is very similar to what we kind of started to see in this country, where some of the um, people, um, you know, call them deep state, call them whatever you want, or even people that are just communists and pushing for communism and things of that sort. Once they got into a position of, uh, that looked like they were going to slowly get to the point where they were losing control. It was very possible for them to end up losing control. They moved to, the, in, the, in cases of possession, they moved to what they call the external phase. That's the stuff you see in movies where things are going around and around and around in the, um, in the, uh, in the, inside the room, although that's very rare. They, it, it actually does do that, or they'll start like blow out the candles or they'll blow out the um, lights or whatever have you. And it's, it's to distract everybody on the outside once they've started to lose control on the inside. Oh. Um, the other thing is it's very common is claiming that they've, they're victorious or that they've already won when they really haven't yet. It hasn't been proven to actually be the case or that they actually have rights or that there's certain things that they have that other people you know, that the other people can't take away from them, etc. So it's very similar to a lot of the things that we're actually seeing. And that's the thing that the demons constantly just shift your focus away from God and on to your troubles, the magnitude of them and things of that, rather than keeping your focus on him and doing what you need to do to actually win the battle. So I think that's the, my concern is that a lot of people, I saw this at least for the first couple of days after it looked like, like um, uh, Joe Biden was going to win, a lot of the people on the on the right just got demoralized. It was like they deflated and almost they almost gave up like right off the bat. So, and you know this, it, if, if I may make the comparison, it's a bit of a long comparison, but uh, you know, bear with me. This whole situation with Trump reminds me a very much like um, the the situation that Joan of Arc suffered in her life. So one of the things that I learned in dealing with Satan in a particular case is that when he is the demon of delay, now this is very interesting, when he delays things, um, he does so in order to slow things down so that other things can be put in place because his goal is to block the process. So he's a demon of delay. Uh, we're occupied by the deep state. I mean, that's basically what we're dealing with. Right. And the English thought that they had a right to rule over France. And so did the elite. And so did the communists. They think they have a right to rule. So there's this, there, the parallels in the life of St. Joan of Arc are pretty, um, pretty stark. At the end, when she was being tried, Joan was essentially alone. She felt alone. There's even times when you read um, her uh, biography that she was actually, even during, between battles, she would feel very much alone because essentially... Um, you know, it, I always tell people, it's pretty bad when it takes a woman to man up the French, right? So, but to go to war. But the point being is, is that she was alone. And now we've got a situation where it looks like Trump is alone. So even those who appear to be with her, very, or with her 
during her life were very often the ones uh, delaying things and sabotaging things and trying to derail it. And you actually see that even with Trump throughout the course of his his um, his uh, presidency. And even now, there's the people that should be supporting him are the ones that are, are derailing it. The deep state wants to uh, wants to impose an alternative form of government. That's exactly what the English wanted to do. They wanted to basically maintain and expand their control over France. St. Joan was sold out by a Frenchman. Uh, Trump is very often sold out by the same people in his party. Number four, beautiful women are more likely to be possessed by evil demons. Now for the next one, this exorcist is not a Christian exorcist, but rather a Muslim exorcist. It's from a news article by Mirror, a newspaper based in the UK anyway. Let me read you a bit from the article. An Islamic exorcist has made the bizarre claim that beautiful women are more likely to be possessed by evil spirits. Malam Luthfi Jamal Baba, an imam and exorcist from Ghana, West Africa, said that although men can be inhabited by jinns, beautiful women are more prone to possession. He said, some of the jinns are stubborn and when the victim is in a trance, they become violent and try to attack the exorcist during the exercise. When it happens that way, the victims are tied with a rope and sometimes chained to chairs to keep them calm. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar what jinn means, Muslims have different view about the demonic. The devil in Islam is called Iblis and Iblis is not an angelic being but rather a jinn or genie. According to Islam, angels are created of light and are incapable of sin while jinn are created of fire and therefore can sin. According to the traditions of Islam, Iblis was simply a jinn who inappropriately found himself among the angels in heaven. Now going back to the earlier article, the Muslim exorcist believes that caning victims during exorcism gets the jinns out more quickly. He said, the victims at that moment do not feel the pain. The jinns are the ones who feel the pain and it is at this moment, together with the Quranic recitation, that they flee. <laughs> And finally, number five, train teams to battle evil spirits. It's easy to see how the liberal media see us who keep on talking about demons, the devil, exorcisms, and spiritual warfare in general in this modern world. Just take a look at what they said about Jim Caviezel labeling the man as unstable and crazy just because he's talking about Jesus out in the open. So here's one written by Irish News and it says, Controversial exorcist priest calls for trained teams to battle evil spirits. A Dublin priest has claimed that Ireland requires more teams of trained lay people to provide deliverance for those possessed by evil spirits. Father Pat Collins, a Vincentian priest who carries out exorcisms and has offered a book on demonic possession, said the rise in secularism means more people are getting into all kinds of things that can leave them vulnerable to spiritual forces that can be negative. He has called for the Catholic Church in Ireland to train lay people to perform deliverance ministry, an act he calls simple exorcism. The cleric told the Irish Catholic newspaper that extreme cases or solemn exorcism still requires a priest as per canon law. Well, for your information, Father Collins has previously attracted ridicule for claiming that people with persistent suicidal thoughts could be oppressed by an evil spirit. And so, during in his interview with the Irish Catholic, Father Collins, who's also a trained psychologist, said, demand is much greater than the supply when it comes to the need for deliverance from evil. He said, as Ireland has secularized, there is a crisis of truth and a crisis of meaning. People are getting into all kinds of things they wouldn't have got into before. As a result, people are more open to spiritual forces that can be negative, he said. I think there is a growing need for deliverance. Undoubtedly, this needs to be acknowledged. Just when we have fewer priests than ever and priests are overburdened, this new need is coming along. I still think the bishops need to address it. Father Collins said he would like to see teams where there are sympathetic psychiatrists and psychotherapists working with people who are in deliverance ministry and they're working holistically together so that diagnosis is better than it is at the moment. There are spirits of trauma. So if a person was badly abused, say as a child, and haven't been enabled to deal with the abuse, their negative emotions open a door to, that gives the, the evil one 
kind of a of, of a, a grip on their lives. Now they may be denying that even the devil exists, but of course denying he exists doesn't make him go away, mm -hmm. and he will exploit their lack of belief, their involvement in the occult, and get a foothold. And then they are pleading with people like me, please help me to escape from this web of evil, this oppression that's really affecting my life in such a negative way. Now for the last part of this video, I'd like to include a prayer session with Monsignor Stephen Rossetti in casting out spirits of fear from our lives, which I think will be very useful for you and me. Sadly, many people suffer from a deep sense of fear. Sometimes it's even debilitating. Uh, we see it especially in those who are afflicted with demons, for example. They're often uh, terrified of the evil one and filled with fear. This is how Satan tries to control us. His kingdom is a kingdom of fear. And, and for example, when he throws things around during an exorcism, when there's all these sort of demonic antics, as we call them, what's, what's his goal? His goal is to frighten us. He feeds off the fear and he's trying to control us with fear. That's his kingdom, a kingdom of fear and anger and destruction. So, uh, Whenever we feel this great fear and terror, it doesn't, does not come from the Lord. And sometimes people say, well, well, God's angry at me and, he, and he's making me afraid. Uh, no, no, God, God doesn't want you to be afraid. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Jesus said, trust in me, be at peace. There is this monastic term called quiesce, that sense of rest. Uh, it's something that the monks try to uh, foster, and we all should. What is this quiesce, this rest? It's this right relationship with the Lord. It's this peace we have in our deep connection with Jesus and with God. So we, we foster this internal peace. God gives us peace. Satan tries to rule and, and uh, destroy and control through uh, fear. So here's what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to ask you, first I'll give you some thoughts on how to deal with fear and anxiety when it hits you. Here's what I suggest you do. First, three deep breaths. It helps the body to relax. Try it with me. Inhale. Exhale. Deep breath. Exhale. Big deep breath. Exhale. Feel your body relax. And now say three times, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Let me say a prayer now that God would heal you of the deep sense of fear in, that might be in your life and give you his peace. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus, promised us your peace. We pray now for that peace. Heal our inner fears and anxieties, our terrors. Give us a deep, deep sense of peace in our hearts of quiesce. May we rest in you. May the blood of Jesus wash over our minds and heal them. May the blood of Jesus wash over our hearts and heal them. May the blood of Jesus wash over us again and again and again, healing, purifying, sanctifying. May the blood of Jesus wash over us again and again and again. May the Lord's peace fill our hearts. May we rest in him. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be at peace. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in God's peace. Well then, that's all for the video this time. I hope what we've put together here are useful for you, even if one of them is about the Muslim's exorcist. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. And for any of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the description box below. I'd like to say thank you so much in advance for your support and contribution, and we can only repay you with more useful videos in the future. Well then, until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.